Hey guys, for a lot of you, this kitchen is going to look really familiar. <laughs> I know it is for me and it's kind of surreal to be here. This is Living on a Dime. And today we wanted to talk about how moms can be frugal preppers even when they don't know that they're frugal pepper preppers. Yeah. It's just kind of who and what a mom is. Yeah. And I started, we were just talking about this. I started prepping before prepping was a thing only because my mom raised two teens on $500 a month. So we knew what crisis was. It's, we were in a permanent crisis for like 10 years uh, growing up and no fault of our own. It's just the way it happened. But through that, I kind of got this sense in myself that you need to always be ready for what's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times we look at it and we think that they're not really related because you're thinking about big expensive equipment and super light duty backpacks and tents <laughs> and water filter systems, when in reality, 200 years ago, a frugal mom mm -hmm. would, would have been the ultimate person to have on your team in an emergency. Yeah. A lot of people watch our channel and they're like, how do you do it all? Yeah. But having learned those skills and then in the good times, you have fibromyalgia, mm -hmm. but mine is auto some mm -hmm. interesting autoimmune problems that mean that if during the good times I will do X, Y, and Z and build it up, mm -hmm. then when I have bad days, I can just go reach into X, Y, and Z and pull yep. it out and use it. And that way I'm not having catastrophic days yeah. and weeks. Instead, everything smooths out because on the good days, I do everything I can to prepare for the bad days. Yeah. On a daily basis. Yeah. I'm prepping for my own daily basis. Okay, so here we are in front of the oh-so-important pantry. Yes. And it's not where you're going to keep fresh food. It's something that's going to stay for about three months in your house. You want to keep things cycled through it. You don't want to be keeping things in here that you don't use because it is a relatively small space. Yeah, I took a closet, a coat closet, and made it into my pantry. Yeah. Because this house does not have a pantry. And one thing, um, people are always like, well, where do I put food storage? Put it under your bed. Mm -hmm. Put it in the top of your kids' closets. Put it um, underneath, like, dressers that mm -hmm. are kind of standing up a little bit. You can slide canned goods under there. You can make a bed out of food storage. Yes. <laughs> you you can make a bed can. out of books, too. I have made a bed out of books, too. <laughs> right so don't think it has to be a pantry and even like at one house I had open not open um well out in the open I guess is what I'm trying to say a shelving unit with doors and that's where I kept a lot of things right. when we had our little house in Idaho so don't get caught up on it has to be a pantry and a lot of people do that actually yeah. so yeah and the thing is, is you can have more food storage, but just have what you need on hand so you don't have to go up and down stairs because if you don't have it to hand or you have to send a child down for it, a lot of times it doesn't get used and it doesn't get cycled through. Yeah, it's, it's really hard. Now, we're talking about $5 a week prepping. And I am not a prepper, but I have lived through floods, tornadoes, all kinds of disaster, severe poverty. You know, if you guys have seen any of our videos, you've seen mom's story about how she raised $500, $500 a month, two teens. You know, you never know when something is gonna happen. This is not a zombie apocalypse type thing. This is, you never know when the next hurricane flood or anything like that. And frugal. I mean, the the, yeah. the main thing, the reason my parents got into prepping was only because they had seven kids and they found that as they started to prep, their food budget went down mm -hmm. because they were buying in bulk. They were buying when it was on sale rather than in the moment. And so it just meant that it, it was huge on saving money. And so it was kind of nice that you were doing both at the same time. Yeah, exactly. And that's kind of what I do. And just so you know, I don't go to Costco <laughs> and buy a huge thing of beans or rice or whatever. And I will say that my prepping tips may not be the normal prepping tips. And, and I have a good reason for that. And let me, one of the things, if you're gonna spend $5 a week, is to start with the easiest things first, okay? Now, I have regular beans and regular rice. Both of these make a complete protein-filled carbohydrate total meal. You can sustain life on this for quite a while. Now, what I would do is, and this is my preference, but 
in case you don't have water, I would get canned beans and minute rice to start with. Not a ton, but just enough to get you through, you know, a month, maybe. And it's really inexpensive. You can get like a can of beans for 25 to 50 cents, depending on where you're at in the country. You can get several of those for your first week, really easy. The next week, I would get spices. And people don't think of the spices part, but when you're gonna be eating- It gets bland. You can change it up really well. And like you said, you can take a can of um, tomato paste, it's small, it's condensed, you can rehydrate it, add it to anything, and it adds a ton of flavor. Yeah. So start small with that. The next thing I do is then I have boxes of macaroni and cheese and dehydrated milk. Mm -hmm. Because this is super simple to make. Now, I will say with all of these, the first thing I would get is to save up your money and get a water filter of some yeah. sort. Now I have a, a food safe five gallon bucket that I got a water filter online with a spigot and that's the way I went. It's a really cheap water filtration system. It's like $40. Save up your money. If you don't have water, you can't cook you can't anything. Do anything. You're, you're not going to want to eat either no. if, you're, if you're thirsty. No. And here's the thing. For me, what we've done is we have the water filtration, but to add to that, we have um, water downstairs in soda jugs, mm -hmm. juice jugs, those kinds of things. I rotate those out every six months. I go out and pour them all on my plants, refill them, put them in again, and the jugs I replace like once a year. Mm -hmm. I also put them in totes so that if they leak for some reason, they're not leaking all right. over my basement. <laughs> Yeah. can be a problem. Also keep your water in a place where it won't freeze. Right. Or be really conscious if it's in a place that freezes, if you lose power, we got to get that water out. Right. Because this is first. Colorado. This is not Tulsa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Idaho, Colorado, it, it will freeze if it's in your garage and you lose power mm -hmm. and that's your source of heat. It'll freeze yeah. if it's in the basement. Uh, that's a big concern. Look at your pipes. If that water's freezing, your pipes might be freezing. So yeah, that might be where you want to be having your heating happening is in your mm -hmm. basement. Yeah. And you know, put them in the totes because you don't want to mess yeah. and you can get, oh my goodness, you can get totes off dumpster diving now because everybody's mm -hmm. just getting rid of them. I get mine for 50 cents at the thrift store when I don't, yeah. you know, have them. So that's the first main things I would spend my money on and get started. The next thing I do is we dehydrate a lot. Now, I don't like canning. I'm not a big canner. Don't send me emails if you don't like it. <laughs> and I just, I don't like to can. I have chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia. I, the heat and humidity in August is not good for me. And so I just can't do it, but we do dehydrate. So what we do is we vacuum seal in the jars or we dehydrate, like these are sweet potato chips. Mm -hmm and then I can rehydrate them. Now I will say that normally, these are just what we're using right now, but normally I will vacuum seal them. Look for a good vacuum sealer. You can find one at garage sales. I found my last one for $10 at a garage sale with bags and everything. Mm -hmm. The lady said she bought it and just didn't want to use it. I was like, well, I'll use it. Right. And so I vacuum seal that. So I would save up your money and like for two weeks and go look for garage sales, thrift stores, that kind of thing. You can find vacuum sealers all the time now. And I have a video review coming up for <clears throat> the one that we had sent us. We used the Kasori. I've used it twice. The first time I thought it was broken. Second time I figured out how to use it and it wasn't broken. I do think they're cool, but there's a learner's curve. So there's test it. If you find it at a, at a garage sale, just test it really quick because there are some parts that if people have lost them, it doesn't work. Yeah, so look and see when you look at the garage sales and stuff, first of all, plug it in while mm -hmm. you're there. They should let you plug it in and if they don't, don't buy it, of course. Um, look at the, there's like a little um, seal type thing. They look like little squishy styrofoam yeah. or something. If that is not in excellent condition, it don't buy work. it. Yeah. Don't buy it because that's what creates the seal. So yeah. yeah. And on mine there was three. There was like this little rubber thing, and then there was a seal on top and a seal on the bottom. And I don't know anything about vacuum sealers, but I do know that I played with it for an hour before I figured out that those yeah. weren't garbage because I thought they were garbage when I opened it. <laughs> yeah, and and don't get frustrated. Try it a time or two, even five. You know, it's kind of like we keep telling people, 
They're like, well, I just don't know how to make a pie. Okay, get $20 worth of pie supplies and spend one day, one afternoon, two hours, three hours, just making pies yeah. over and take them out to all your neighbors, but just make pies over and over until you get pie learned. The mm. same with thing with bread. Make homemade bread every day, every other day until you learn it. You have to learn these things. You can't just expect bread to show up on your doorstep in the middle the of a fairy. flood. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and, and have a plan. Like for us, we don't have a uh, wood stove or anything like that at this house, but I make sure my grill is always filled with propane. Um, and I have, I have recipes that I know I can make on right. my grill in an emergency because we're in a suburban area. Yeah. And so just adapt it to where your area is. When we had a wood stove, I would have done, you know, my cooking a little bit differently, right. but we don't at this house. So kind of prep it for your area, but also learn these skills. Because, and things like um, when you're using the wood stove, cook while you're using the stove and it's hot and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, don't do up a separate burn to cook no. with. <laughs> no, but you would be surprised the people who do. Yeah. So so don't do that. Now, and, and if it's cold enough outside that you need a wood stove, use your outdoors as your refrigerator if you're out of power. Mm -hmm. Just have a big milk box or a truck bed that locks your down cooler. so you don't have animals getting, or, or your cooler, mm -hmm. and just have somewhere the animals aren't gonna be getting into it. Put it on the shady side of the house if it's starting to get to be springtime, and monitor it and use it quickly. Small batches, not big batches, mm -hmm. small batches, eat it, cook another one. Small batches, yep. eat it, cook another one. And we, when we moved to Idaho, we did not have a refrigerator when we first moved there, and it was in winter, and that is how we lasted yeah. for like two or three months until we got a refrigerator, yeah. was using the cooler. And I will tell you, even then, we were desperate enough because what happened was we moved to Idaho and we thought Mike had a job and he didn't. And a cat got into mm -hmm. our food. But here's the thing. We could see on our round steak, where back then round steak was cheap. See on my round steak, all the cat marks on this side and this side was perfectly fine. Well, we cut off the cat marks and we ate the other side. There and are we those times. It. There and are those times. So, you, beggars can't be choosers when you're when you're in the middle of a crisis so you need to just kind of get into that mindset okay this is surviving we are alive we're doing okay we have enough food and the thing is is to start now because like with the macaroni and cheese that's super cheap but and I'll tell you how I store it let me show you how I store it real quick here because we had we used to have three cats when my niece moved in with us. And I needed storage containers because I didn't want the bugs to get right. into it. Because they can, if it's not in a sealed container, even though you've got plastic and cardboard, mm -hmm. insects can get in. Yeah, so what I did was, and here's kind of a non-traditional tip for prepping, but I bought the small bags mm -hmm. of rice, and I bought the small bags yeah. of beans. And I did that for a couple of reasons. One, it's easy to handle. You can send kids for it and it won't make a mess. <clears throat> you don't have 20 pounds of rice, you're having to figure out what to do with. What am I gonna do with this 20 pounds of rice? And here's the beauty. In these um, cat litter containers, I just reused them. I just lined up my rice in here, my or my beans and my rice in here. They stacked really nice. Macaroni and cheese stacks really nice in here. Spaghetti, all your pastas stack in here really mm. nice. Then I sprinkled a little bit of diatomaceous earth on top, just in case bugs happen to get in, they wouldn't make it past the diatomaceous earth. And this way, um, they're still in their package, but even though this isn't food safe, it's a great way. Yeah, because the plastic they're in is food safe. Yeah. So this plastic not being food safe doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. They're not in contact. Yeah, but it's free. Yeah. Well, and square <laughs> buckets will save you so much space as far as what you're trying to pack in. If you're using round buckets that you like buy at Walmart, mm -hmm. you have this empty space on all corners and it's harder to stack things in. We use um, icing buckets from bakeries. Mm -hmm. You can get them for free or you can get them for a dollar. I mm. like them because they're smaller. The really big five gallon buckets are hard for me to lift. So the two gallon buckets I like, 
but we do something very similar. What we do is we do get the big bulk things of rice and beans, but then we put them in Ziploc bags and we stack them in buckets because yep. you can go down and grab the bag, take it upstairs. You're not pouring it. You're not attracting um, mice by having mm -hmm. grain on the floor. Yeah. And it means that instead of having everything exposed and if it gets wet, it's ruined. You have it in buckets. If you do have a flood, you pick up your bucket and move it upstairs. Mm -hmm. It's not it's yeah. not a cardboard or a plastic uh, feed sack type situation or or little bags that you have to try mm -hmm. and pick them all up and move them and they're still getting wet. Yeah, yeah. So if I were to start my food storage from scratch and I only have five dollars a week, here's what I would start with. I would start with beans and rice. Mm -hmm. I would then get my spices. I would then get my tomato sauce. Tomato paste is better. Um, but tomato sauce, it kind of depends on how your water situation right. you think is going to be. Because it takes a lot of water to rehydrate tomato paste. It a does. A lot of water. Yeah, it does. And um, then I would get something like macaroni and cheese, pull top cans mm -hmm. of like ravioli, spaghettios, stew, chicken soup, the heartier soup type uh you know, pre-made meals. And you don't need a ton of pre-made meals, but I would have a few on mm. hand at least. Start with foods that your family will eat too. Now, I have beans and rice on hand, and honestly, my family doesn't eat beans and rice, but in an emergency, we would eat beans and rice. So I have a few of those on hand. But then, I add things like, people are gonna be like, what? I add like a can of coffee. Mm -hmm. And chocolate, Cho you have to have chocolate. Tea bags. Yeah, if you have a, yeah. a craving thing that makes you a more livable person, <laughs> you need to have a lot of it on yeah. hand. Yeah. Or you're gonna kill your kids. <clears throat> exactly. And so I have a few treats that I put in there, like the coffee, tea, that kind of thing. Then get a bag of sugar, two bags of sugar one week. Get a bag of flour, a couple bags of flour the next week. So just start each week, just picking up a couple of things and you will be surprised how much food you can gather. Now, here's another non-traditional tip that I haven't heard anybody say, but accept free food. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard anybody say this, but I have neighbors, family members, like right now, the housing prices in Colorado are going crazy, so everybody's selling their house and moving. All my neighbors give me their food they don't want to move. Well, even if it's food that I don't think we would necessarily eat on a regular basis, which I know a lot of peppers say only have food that you will eat, but I keep it on hand until I can get my food storage up. Right. It's food. If we're hungry, we'll eat it. We'll eat it. And so I accept all food that people will give me. Like I had an aunt one time that went to the food bank but the food bank just said, here's your box. That's all you got. You didn't get to pick, here's your box. And she didn't eat some things like the macaroni and the spaghettios and those kinds of things. So she gave them to me. And it was um, making me at least feel better so that at least I had that on hand, so. Well, and, and for us, because we also do the homesteading, we always accepted free food if we felt like our our food storage was a little low. And then once we brought the new food storage in, we would cook mm -hmm. it and feed it to chickens, we would feed it to pigs. And um, sometimes we traded it for stuff like bartering with food storage. If you have something that you won't use, but you know mm -hmm. somebody else who has like a cow and you have all this food storage somebody else gave to you, mm -hmm. we had a lot of grain. We have traded it for fruit trees because we, we don't eat grain. So we had all this grain, um, things that we couldn't eat traded it to somebody for chickens, traded it to somebody for fruit trees. You could trade it for half a beef if you had enough of it. Um, be, be original, it doesn't always have to cost money in order to set up your food storage. Just make sure you talk to people and, and yeah. be active in your community because there are food pantries. We had um, food pantries local to us where they couldn't get rid of all their bread and um, somebody told us about it, about it and we ended up going and getting bread. We gave it to friends to put in their freezer. You can freeze bread. Mm -hmm. And oh, use it bread later. freeze is great. Yeah, and you can also, if you're concerned about freezing the bread, like you don't have enough, like I haven't had space before, I will chop it up and make croutons. Mm -hmm. In dining, we have a crout dining on a dime. We have croutons in there. Okay, that's a dried bread. You can then save those. Now you can't save them for weeks and weeks and weeks on end, but you can, they'll go a week. Yeah. 
Another thing, if, you, if you're concerned about freezing bread, because maybe you just don't have enough space or whatever, um, you can make things like croutons, breadcrumbs, those types of things. Bread pudding. Yeah, all those types of things, you can make them up and use them. Now, I'll make a huge batch, because we have a really good recipe in Dining on a Dime. My family loves them, so I'll make a big batch of, of croutons that's like this big, and my kids will eat it in a day. Right. They love it, they just like to eat it for a snack. But those are ways you can use food that you already have but you're not sure you have enough space to store it or whatever the reason is and you can still use it. So think of different ways to use your food when you're in that situation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so if I had only $5 and I was going to go and get food storage, I would start off with beans. Mm -hmm. Our family can't eat rice, we can't eat any kind of grains, so I would just beans and lentils and um, our problem is is that we sometimes need to really stray towards the side of organic. The place that we found that you could get organic beans and lentils for the least expensive was Natural Grocers. It was less expensive than going to Reesers or Albertsons or anything like that for beans, so Natural Grocers. Um, they were actually less expensive than the conventional ones. Amish food supplies sometimes okay. will have them. Okay. If you live in a place that's by, that you know, that. yeah, we don't, but sometimes. Um, I do let, I do prefer to get bulk, but because price per pound, it is less expensive, but then you have to have equipment that comes with it. Mm -hmm. So rather than getting confused and worried about equipment, and if you don't even have these kind of buckets, you can take your little bag of beans and put it in a mason jar and just put the lid mm -hmm. on and that will waterproof and insect proof and everything proof it. Um, so yeah, I would, I would go lentils, I would go beans and I would go salt. I would get one. Oh yeah, salt was my big one, I forgot to. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I would do. Mm -hmm. And I would get $5 worth of that. And you could literally live on it every day and you would survive. Mm -hmm. uh, fat would be a really nice thing to have in there. So. Um, well, and I do get, do you ever get this? We can and you guys peanuts. can't eat peanut butter? If you can eat peanut butter, this dehydrated peanut butter is great. And mm -hmm. it's only eight bucks at Big Lots, but there is, 37 servings in here. Yeah. So you could get by quite a while on, you know, something yeah. like this if you needed to. This is your fat and your protein in it. Well, so. exactly. And and there is that to, to keep in mind is that <clears throat> if you don't have enough fat, you're not going to do well. But fat, good fat is expensive. You you want olive oil, you want mm -hmm. avocado oil, you want maybe grapeseed oil. I steer clear from corn oil and canola oil just because of our eating sensitivities. Um, if there was one jar of oil that I could have, but you can't get it for $5, it's avocado oil because it tastes yeah. like butter when it's on potatoes. You can use it for high fat frying, low fat mm -hmm. frying, and it also is good for your skin, so but you about, can't get it for five bucks. What about dehydrated uh, fat? Butter. Um, is that as good? Do you know? I know that for, for it is more expensive though. So that yeah, would be like a, a one. Thing. That would be like something you'd save up your five dollars for a month and order it yeah. type thing. But I prefer not to have something processed. I like things to be uh, expeller pressed, virgin. Um, our bodies just seem to process it better. Okay. And I would pick the avocado oil over butter. I would pick it over ghee because of the uh, shelf stable. Not a lot of flavors into it. You can use it for salad dressing. You can use it for cooking. You can use it as a topping on potatoes. Um, so if you had one thing a week you could buy and you already had felt like you had a little bit of beans and lentils, I think a bottle of avocado oil is seven or eight dollars, mm -hmm. but that would be the one that I would buy. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's my tip and um, hopefully you enjoyed this. I do feel like moms are the original prepper because you're always looking ahead to what's the budget gonna do. Yeah. And when things kind of do go a little bit haywire and you have to do weird things with your budget, having a full pantry takes down the stress level a, a little bit. And so I don't think there's much of a difference between a prepper and just an everyday, uh, everyday mom you know, that, that is really kind of keeping the well-being of her family at the forefront mm -hmm. of her mind. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Go check out Living on a Dime. And they have the cookbook that we're going to go talk about that I do think is the ultimate um, frugal prepper mom yeah. how-to guide. So and go check you out. have a book like that because, not to, you know, do a spiel here, but we have like how to make soda crackers, mm -hmm. how to make um, homemade tortillas, how laundry to soap. make laundry soap, how to make your own taco seasoning. All those things, missionaries use our book all the time because graham crackers. Yeah. Because they want a graham cracker and they're like, oh, I didn't know I could make those. Yeah. 
And so it really is the ultimate prepper cookbook because it has everything in there, how to make yeah. rice, how to make, you know, we have how to make rice, how to make scrambled eggs. You'd be surprised people who don't know how to, you or know, how to do make the a basics. potato. If, mm -hmm. if you generally spend $12 yeah. on a small bag of hash browns, instead you can go spend $12, get a 50 pound box mm -hmm. of potatoes, put it down in a cool room, take the lid off so it can breathe. And then you take 10 potatoes and when you cook dinner at night, you put them in the oven, you pull them back out, you have them for dinner, but then you have the others in the fridge and you use them for hash browns. Uh, you can use them for like uh, a casserole, anything. Yeah, and it's fast because mm -hmm. they're already cooked. You just yeah. have to season them. And we dehydrate them. our um, potatoes. Mm -hmm. We dehydrate our hash browns. We shave them up and we dehydrate them, and they work really good. But if you don't have those skills, you feel like you're trapped into the retail system of groceries. And the retail mm -hmm. system of groceries is ten times, in oh, many yeah. cases, way more than ten times. Like the potatoes, for instance, the weight of those hash browns in that bag compared to two potatoes and you spent 10 cents on these two potatoes and $12 on these hash browns. If you're living like that, stop it. Yeah. <laughs> we feel really, really strongly yeah. about just saying you don't have to live that way. You don't have to be tied to that higher, uh, it, it may feel like it's less stressful because you just have to throw it in the oven. But the thing is, is that if you have a system, don't you have yeah. some meal plans? Yeah. Yeah, and even in dining, we have meal plans already started out using the recipes in the book. But here's the thing, okay, this is the tar I get it together people coming out, but guys, learn these things ahead of time so that when you need it, you will have those skills. And I don't mean you have to go out and be an all out prepper, you know, but at least have a few skills on hand to take care of yourself. So yeah, that's, you know, that's why I'm glad we're doing this video because everybody thinks that it takes a lot of money to prep and have a big food storage and you don't you can do it on just five dollars a week or free you can do it or on free. free yeah if if you are on food stamps one of the best ways in the world to prep is if you are on food stamps because mm -hmm. you have this budget every month and if you my it's how my sister got all of her food storage she had a very short period of time she needed to be on food stamps she filled her freezer she filled her cupboards mm -hmm. and she was able to do it so quickly because she knew she had a set amount to spend and she yep. knew that they didn't actually use it every week. Yeah. And she and she filled her food storage with food stamps. Yeah. Yeah, and I see people who are using food stamps and they're buying juice boxes and they're buying the fruit snacks. Don't buy those things. Buy beans buy, and rice. Buy your beans and rice and your spices and your salt. And yeah. get yourself set up so that if something happens again, you know, you'll be prepared and you won't have to, you know, rely on somebody else to take care of you. Um, I guess after the floods, we had floods here in Colorado and just seeing all the people that were having, that weren't prepared and we're having suffering. to have people come in and help them and that kind of thing. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't help people. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm saying, you know, our family, if we had that situation again, we could make it on our own for several days. And you can help others. Yes. You can help others. Exactly. Yeah. So. Okay. So make sure to go check out Living on a Dime. They have the cookbook, Dining on a Dime. And uh, we are gonna do one more video that's gonna be over on TARS that's uh, prepping on $10. So make sure to go check that out. And we'll talk to you later. Bye. Okay, so let's have a look at the screen. Do you have your book? Oh, uh, right there, stop. The cabinet under, right to your left, underneath, back up there. There we go. Okay. Oh, we got the used one. Oh, well, that's kind of here. <laughs> Husband <proof. laughs> oh, That's right. I would love that. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the circus.